Hi, welcome back to OMG The Cloud. Today we're picking up on our IoT series with one of the core components of that, which is Home Assistant. And Home Assistant also has some plugins specifically for these IoT devices we mentioned earlier, and that's gonna run with ESP Home. Now, the first thing I wanna cover is I wanna show you how to get Home Assistant installed as a virtual machine. Home Assistant is one of those things that I feel like is a little bit better suited to be either a separate virtual machine or even run on separate hardware. A lot of people like to run it on a Raspberry Pi. Now, I'm not a big fan of that. I'd rather it run as a virtual machine in my virtual infrastructure where I can back it up and have a little bit better control over it. But for whatever reason, it's a little tricky to get it installed in VMware. I felt the documentation was a little bit lacking on, so I just wanted to cover it and show you some of those configuration points that are essential to get that working in VMware. So let's step through that. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is get a hold of the virtual machine disk. So this is gonna be based on a VMDK file, and I'm gonna put a link to where this lives in GitHub so that you know where to find it. But as of this video, the current version is 5.13. And what we're looking for is this HAS OS or Home Assistant Operating System. And we're looking for the OVA version. And we're looking specifically for the vmdk.xz. So XZ is a compressed file. So when you download this, depending on your operating system, You'll either need to get a tool like 7-Zip or something like that if you're on Windows. Natively in Mac OS, this will prompt you to decompress it to its raw VMDK file after you download it. Once you get that downloaded, let's pop into our virtual environment. Let's create a new virtual machine. I'm gonna call it Home Assistant OS. I'm gonna give this a little bit of a generic setup with Linux. I'll give it the current version of Debian. Next. Okay, so for the hardware, this is where we need to make some changes. I want to give it two vCPUs. I want to make sure those are on a single socket, two cores per socket, one socket. Let's give it a little more memory than that. Let's give it four gigs. And then the hard disk, we're actually going to delete that. We are going to delete the SCSI controller and we're going to delete the CD-ROM drive. Next and finish. Okay. So why do we do that? We're actually gonna upload that VMDK file and we're gonna attach it. So what you need to do is browse to your data store and find the folder structure where that virtual machine was created. And we'll see there's no VMDK file in here because we did not create one. So go ahead and hit upload files and you're gonna wanna upload the decompressed VMDK file that you downloaded earlier. Remember it has to be decompressed here. So make sure you get that done correctly and get that uploaded okay and once that is done uploading you'll see that vmdk file up here so now we need to go ahead and attach it and there's going to be a couple configuration points so make sure you're paying attention closely here i'm going to go back to our vm we're going to edit it and we're going to say add new device existing hard disk and we're going to browse once again for that vmdk file that we just uploaded there it is and we're going to make a couple changes to it so expand out its details we're going to put it on virtual device node ide0 okay and make sure that this one here that this one since we deleted our cd-rom drive there's no ide01 so we want to make sure it's on ide00 no matter what so if you still have a cd-rom drive in there delete that save come back in make sure this lands on ide 00 okay and next go to the vm options tab at the top go to boot options expand that out and change the firmware from bios to efi from there you can go ahead and hit okay power on the vm and let's launch its console and there we go so it's actually booting so all those configuration changes are necessary to get it to boot that vmdk file properly now from here, you're off to a really good start. It is worth the extra effort. This takes care of, of installing and managing all the VMware tools that you really need to have running on here for a successful system. And it's gonna do the initial setup wizard. So once it goes through here, it's gonna drop you off at the familiar logon screen. So if you go find the IP address that it landed on, now we can go ahead, plug that in. Remember it's port 8123, and there we go. So this will take care of some of its initial setup and housekeeping items that need to be done. From there, you can start to configure it. So this is really the best way, if you wanna actually virtualize Home Assistant OS, I feel like this is the best way to do it. Step through those extra steps, make sure you get this right, 
and that way you're going to have a nice stable home automation platform that's it for this episode just a really quick one here i wanted to show you how to do this part properly so if you found this helpful please give me a thumbs up subscribe let me know down in the comments what else you'd like to see next we're going to be stepping through some of the other configuration points in this like esp home plugin and MQTT and things like that so that we can get some of those IoT devices connected into our home assistant, start talking to them, start having some fun. Thanks again for watching. See you next time.